Hello Linux fans, Rob here and welcome to Linux Quest and today we're going to take a look at Gecko Linux, the rolling release version which would be comparable to Tumbleweed in OpenSUSE. I've got the KDE Plasma desktop loaded up. So far I've been really happy with the ease of setup and configuration. But we're going to get into some of the differences and some of the similarities between Gecko Linux and OpenSUSE which it is based off of. So we'll talk about things like packages that are pre-installed, uh, some of the things that are already set up for you and make installing and getting things like um, codecs and things all in place different from OpenSUSE because it's already set up for you in Gecko Linux. So it's uh, kind of nice. Also, we'll talk about some differences in the repositories. So all of that is coming right up. So the first thing we're going to do is give you a quick overview here of Gecko Linux. So it's a desktop oriented distribution based on OpenSUSE. And so there are two versions. You're going to have static, which is based on Leap. And then you've got the rolling release version of Gecko Linux, which is based on Tumbleweed. So with the rolling version, you're going to get more frequent updates, so on and so forth. One of the things that the developer of Gecko Linux does that I really like is they go ahead and set up all of the proprietary media formats out of the box so you don't have to spend time doing that. It's also a little bit of a stripped down version compared to the, the full on version that you're going to find in OpenSUSE and I like that as well. Uh, the setup and install is very easy with the Calamaries installer. I had no problems whatsoever there. I am currently running again the rolling release version with the KDE desktop and that's the other thing I like here is you've got a large assortment of desktops to choose from within Gecko Linux. Everything from Cinnamon, which I'm going to give a spin, uh, Mate, KDE, Gnome, LXQTE, and XFCE, and I think Ice on the rolling release as well. So lots of choices there. There are also some additional repositories such as Google and Skype, so we'll kind of take a look at those. Yast is still in place and we'll definitely look at Yast. All right, so let's move on from here. Oh, one other thing. This is based off of the latest release. Uh, all of these uh, versions of Gecko Linux are based off of the latest release, which is uh, 15.2. And I think that build was released just a couple days ago. Anyway, it's, it's very, very fresh. And with that said, let's just jump over here. You're at KDE Plasma 5.19.3 and kernel version 5.7. So up to date there. Here we go. OpenSUSE Tumbleweed uh, 2020 0728. Very recent. All right. So moving on from there, let's take a look real quick at some of the pre-installed packages. We'll skip over WPS, which I installed. Under Utilities, you'll get some of the usuals like KCALC, uh, Spectacle. That's going to be built in for screen clipping. Under System, you'll see Gparted is set up your standard Dolphin file manager. And then I like this. So you also have super user mode in file manager as well as terminal super user mode. So that's already set up for you. And I believe that neither of those are going to be set up in this standard OpenSUSE. So good work there by the dev. Uh, you've got YAST and system settings. Under office, you do have LibreOffice. And you know what? I haven't even checked to see what version of LibreOffice we have here. So let's take a look at that real quick. And that's going to be version 7 beta 2. So that was already set up. Interesting here to, to have uh, a very recent version uh, with beta 2 set up under LibreOffice. Uh, under multimedia you've got VLC media player in place. And again this goes back to the codecs. The developer took the time to set up all the multimedia codecs for you so you don't have to within OpenSUSE and you have VLC set up and installed as well as Clementine and I've set up Caden Live and Simple Screen Recorder for the video. Under internet you're going to see Firefox as the default but you do have the Google Chrome browser repo set up and in place so it makes it easy to install Google Chrome if that's the um, web browser you choose to use. Uh, Chromium was already in place I do believe and then Thunderbird was in place as well as Pigeon and KTorrent. Under graphics we have Gwynview which is one of the usuals that you'll find within uh, the Plasma desktop. Ocular, LibreOffice Draw, part of the Office package, and Scanlight. So really kind of a slim, slim down version of OpenSUSE which I like. Here's the standard wallpaper that you'll see when you first boot in. I did change the icons back over to the default breeze icons. 
I will say that I've had some issues there in trying to get theming set up. I've installed a few icon packs, but I'm having issues when I click on the icon pack, it will not apply and then the icon pack kind of fades away. So I'm going to have to dig in a little deeper. It could be some user error with the way I'm installing that through Pling. So maybe there's an issue there and uh, so I'll try some different things. All right, so overall, uh, very happy with the quick install. There was a pause at boot and I thought maybe the install was bad, but it wasn't. I just had to give it a few seconds, uh, about 20 seconds in fact, to go ahead and load in and get everything going. And then after that, the uh, there was an update with uh, media drivers, things like that. Did that update, reboot, and then it, it loads right in. So let's go over to some of the repositories so that you can see what's set up here. So you do have Google Chrome pre-set up, ready to go, Google Talk plugin, NVIDIA. So for those of you with NVIDIA cards, you'll see that that's already been set up under uh, the repo here for you. So you go from the GO4, GO5, uh, X11, and you'll see Pac-Man set up here. So that's going to give you access to a lot of the codecs. Uh, and some of the non-open uh, drivers and things like that and packages. You, you see VLC in here as well as BitTorrent. I'm just going to scroll down in player. Uh, lots of packages within the Pac-Man Tumbleweed repo. Uh, nice to have that all set up as well as Skype. And then your standard Tumbleweed. And that'll take a while to load. The InSync repo, I've, I've set that up myself, and then some Tumbleweed Non OS. So again, this is part of the difference. This is why, you know, some people have argued that Gecko Linux is not really a distro. Uh, it's just, you know, a tweak of OpenSUSE. And I, and I beg to differ because you've got things set up within the repos and some other packages and things pre-installed. You know, a lot of the packages removed to, to get rid of some of the bloat that you'll find within OpenSUSE to make this a thin, in my opinion, its own individual distro. And uh, this kind of thing takes work, so I appreciate what the dev has done here. So KDE Plasma pretty well functions the way it does on any other OS. Uh, one of the things is that the menu launcher here was set up a little different here than you typically see. If we go to alternatives, you're going to see application launcher and application dashboard. Typically you see by default application launcher chosen, but the dev chose application menu in this case, which happens to be my favorite for, um, let's go ahead and cancel out of that, for the Plasma desktop. So I didn't even have to change that, which was very nice. I did change over here. You've got, as default, the date set up under the clock. So I changed that. But other than that, very simple and smooth, quick install, although it was, again, a very slow boot time on the first boot. I did have a lot, uh, or a few, up, uh, not a lot, a few updates for various drivers and things like that, which also went smoothly. And also I'll talk about something else here. Because this is RPM-based, and it's, you know, again, based off of OpenSUSE, there is another way other than this software manager for acquiring software. So if you wanted to, and you can install packages online, you'll just choose what you're running. In this case, this will be comparable to Tumbleweed, and then you can search for packages there. So if I go to Simple Screen Recorder, and you can install this direct install right from the website. So if you prefer that route as opposed to the YAST software manager. Now speaking of YAST, we'll jump back in here under system and we'll go right into the YAST tool. And one of the things about YAST, and it's been around a while again, they YAST kind of put together a collection of system tools before a lot of, a lot of developers decided to kind of do that on their own. Uh, which you see more today, which group all these system tools together. You see that more than ever. But YASP was kind of one of the first. So you've got categories here from software, hardware, system, network services, security and user support, and miscellaneous. But this is very powerful. From, from right here, you can control online updates, software management, repositories, uh, set up the printer, which I did uh, with through CUPS, uh, your kernel settings, okay? You've got a partitioner here set up, system config editor, and that's an area as you get into bootloader. So I went from 10 seconds on the count boot countdown to three, just to speed that up a little bit. Uh, support release notes, 
uh, display system logs, and then file system snapshots. So very powerful here within YAST, all grouped together into one location. The one thing you will notice if you do start to change themes uh, on your system and things like that is YAST is set up. It's going to be what it is theme wise and it's pretty well not going to change over to any global or system wide themes that you set up. It's, it's just going to be stubborn and it's going to look different than the rest of the themed system. But typically you're not with, you know, you're not, you're not going to be hanging out in YAST. You, you go in here to do a few things, make some changes, uh, tweak the system, and then you're right back out. So in my opinion, that's just on the looks department. And so uh, no big deal there. You know, every now and then I just, I feel like, you know, I want to break away from, you know, a Debian based or, or an Ubuntu based system. I just get the urge to, you know, go back over to Arch or over to an RPM based system like this. And certainly OpenSUSE and in this case Gecko Linux have been around an extremely long time. In fact, uh, OpenSUSE, is, you, if you go back and you start looking at the history of Linux, is one of the older distributions out there. And it's just kind of hung on there in there with a huge following, lots of users. So having Gecko Linux here to kind of simplify the install, streamline or slim down OpenSUSE, improve ease of setup and save you time with codecs and things like that, I really appreciate. So kudos to the dev working on Gecko Linux. Keep up the good work, keep it updated. Uh, I'm sure there are many users out there who do appreciate it. All right, that's it for now. As always, thanks for watching.